Good morning, everyone. <coughs> hey, it's so good to see everybody. Listen, you are so smart, you figured out what time to set your clock. It's exactly 11 o'clock this morning. I know the rest of them are probably still asleep, and we're going to wait for them to come in. It is so great to see everybody. We're going to have a great day worshiping the Lord. Let's pray together, and then we're going to sing praises to the Lord. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have of gathering together with each other. Father, with our brothers and sisters in Christ, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, this is all about you today. It's not about any of us. Lord, put our problems, help us put our problems, our needs, our desires aside and just spend the next hour coming before your throne and telling you and showing you how much we love you and how much we love each other. Father, we pray that you will be pleased with the worship service we have in the next hour. Father, and we pray that all of us will open our hearts to the Holy Spirit this morning. Work in our lives, Lord. Change us. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to be the people you want us to be. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this church. We thank you for everyone who has come out this morning. We pray your richest blessings upon every family. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. We've had uh, children participating from our Sunday school, and now today we're having the children's church uh, going to sing a little song. Next week, the children's choir will be singing. Come on up. You're going to do it on this side or that side? We've got the mics over here. Okay. <laughs> Christian soldiers. We're going to stand, sing the first verse and chorus, and then we'll go into our fellowship time.
take you home. Are the youth are coming to help us in the next song. Let's be seated for a second and then we'll stand again. <laughs> We've got a soloist leading us today. <laughs> okay, let's stand for the youth.
You may be seated. <laughs> um, the women's ministry have, has asked uh, to have some moments in the next, over the next uh, couple of months to highlight some of their interests. And there is a bullet insert uh, referring to that. And uh, we'll hear from the women's ministry now. Good morning. I'm standing in for Miss Sandy this morning. She had to leave, but I think everything's okay with her family. These excerpts are from a little devotional book called Jesus Calling, and I'm sorry the author is not on there. I think it's Sarah Martin. I might be wrong, but I will just read the little devotional for you. Save your best for seeking my face. I am constantly communicating with you. To find me and hear my voice, you must seek me above all else. Anything that you desire more than me becomes an idol. When you are determined to get your way, you blot me out of your consciousness. Instead of single-mindedly pursuing some goal, talk with me about it. Let the light of my presence shine on this pursuit so that you can see it from my perspective. If the goal fits into my plans for you, I will help you reach it. If it is contrary to my will for you, I will gradually change the desire of your heart. Seek me first and foremost, then the rest of your life will fall into place piece by piece. As you can see, that's written from the perspective of as if Jesus is saying that to you. And I believe that the sentence uh, right near the end, if it is contrary to my will for you, I will gradually change the desire of your heart. I have definitely gone through that in my life more than once. And it is true that he can change your desires to fit his desires. And you will realize that it really is the best thing for you. And one last thing, I remember the definition that someone wrote for God's will. We always think of God's will as being something huge or way out of our um, expectations, you know, like I'm going to go to Africa. That must be God's will. But I heard someone write a definition for God's will, and it was exactly what I would choose if I knew all the facts. God's will, exactly what I would choose if I knew all the facts. Well, at least these set their clocks correctly uh, of the choir, and uh, we, I appreciate that. But between sicknesses and uh, other uh, emergencies, uh, we still have our core here, and they're going to sing Beautiful Savior, and then we're going to also sing about the Beautiful Savior.
since almost childhood, but uh, I've discovered I grew up in Missouri, and what we sang there is not necessarily what Baptists sang down here. So uh, we're going to teach it to you. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. And the words are on the screen. The choir is going to sing through it once, and then we'll sing through it a couple of times. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you for allowing us to be in your house this morning. Mm -hmm. Father, right now we just ask you for these, the tithes and the offerings that are collected, God, that just give us the wisdom to use it to glorify your kingdom, Father, and to use just for us to reach out in this community and spread your word, God. God, we just want to, we just ask you to be with the sick and the ones that are not here, God, and the empty pews, Father, that you will fill them with the spirits and, and, the, and the souls that you want to be in here, God, to hear your word. And we just pray for Brother Jerry and the message that he has prepared to, to lay on our hearts this morning, God. And just thank you for all that you've done already in this this service. In your name, amen. amen. <laughs>
Thank you, Mr. Gay. So much. All right, brothers and sisters, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be way over in the back of the New Testament, uh, the book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, beginning with verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. And while we're turning there, I'm going to come down for just a second. got a little bit of business to take care of, church family business. Um, I'm going to follow Miss Gay here. That's scary when the preacher's following you at the beginning of the message, isn't it? Uh, we have one more celebration to do this morning. We have to celebrate one more time this couple right here, Edward and Barbara Jean Chancy, 60 years of marriage. And, brother, I want us to give them a hand, first of all. 60 years. If you missed, there was a great celebration. Brother Edward, Miss Barbara Jean, I want you to in introduce your family to everybody. I know you've had a lot of family who helped. They did such a great job. If you were here yesterday at the church, man, you talk about decorating that fellowship hall. It was gorgeous. You want to introduce everybody just so... Brother Jerry. 60 years, she's still telling you what to do. <laughs> Our granddaughter, Constance, Phyllis, <laughs> Patricia, and son-in-law, Paul Carrier. Hey, let's give them a hand. Y'all did such a great job. I told them, I told them this morning that I couldn't believe they were here because they worked hard yesterday taking good care of y'all, didn't they? Yes, sir. Well, listen, we want to tell you again we love you and congratulations. Oh, yeah, okay. I got one more to tell. Brother Heinrich, forgive me for this. You can whip me later, okay? Uh, Brother Edward told me this morning, what's your little uh, granddaughter's name? Lauren. Lauren. You remember the little girl, Lauren, that was here yesterday helping sign everybody in? She met this man right here, and she went over to her granddaddy later and said, is he the one that invented the Heimlich maneuver? <laughs> I better take the mic and go now. That was enough. <laughs> All right, 1 Peter chapter 4. Brothers and sisters, uh, one of the greatest privileges Marcia and I love to do as your pastor and pastor's wife, we are so honored to do this. And, and it happens a lot, unfortunately, in our church family. But is one of our greatest privileges is to be with you and your loved ones while a family member is having surgery or some kind of medical procedure. We do that a lot. You know, and I'm always amazed. The same thing happens with every family. Once you get to the hospital and they check your loved one in or they check you in and they take you back in the back and then everybody has the chance to go back and visit with you, it's amazing to me. Once they take the loved one back for surgery, what do the rest of us do? And we're there with you a lot. What do the rest of us do? We wait. We're waiting for our loved one, right? I have never seen anyone in this church family, I want to tell you, and I'm so proud, as soon as they take their loved one back, I'm afraid my family might do this. They'd say, we're going to the beach. We'll see you all later. You know, in other words, he's on his own. Tough luck. When, when he gets done, we'll come back and see him tomorrow and everything. We wait there for any word of information, don't we? I mean, all of us do the same thing. We're so honored to wait with you there. You are committed to waiting until your loved one comes back. And there's news, and hopefully the news is good. Everything went okay. The surgery was a success. And we're honored to be there to celebrate you, celebrate with you. Jesus Christ has given his word to us, brothers and sisters. He is coming back. Not might come back, not... Just a fairy tale. Jesus says over and over, I am coming back. He is coming back for those who love him. His church, his bride, he promises to. Okay, well, while we wait for that day to happen, and I'm looking forward to it any day now. If it happened right now, that would be awesome. But what are we supposed to do while we wait? While we wait for Jesus to come back, what are some things Christians should be doing? Now, let me give you this morning, we're going to talk about four great spiritual disciplines every Christian needs four spiritual disciplines that we all need to develop that will help us wait with patience while our Lord is coming. Uh, read with me 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. It's going to be on the screen. Of course, you have it in your Bible there. Here we go. Let's read God's Word together. He says, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayer." And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. 
as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. And, of course, that last word, amen. In other words, yes, let it be. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you this morning that we have the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us, Lord. That gives us hope and excitement for the future. Father, when you have Jesus Christ, when we have you, we have everything we need for this life and the next life. Lord, Jesus is everything we need. Father, like I put on the church sign this week, it is impossible to have a happy life without Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray this morning, we pray that every person in this church will not leave here this morning until we know that we're saved. Not we hope we're saved, but we know that Jesus Christ is our Savior. We've said yes to Jesus Christ. We've followed Him in believer's baptism. We've knelt and prayed that sinner's prayer, and we've asked Jesus to come in, and we've welcomed Him in, and we've repented of our sins. Father, we must all do that. Every person in the world must do that in order to be saved, in order to go to heaven. Help us, Lord, to examine our own hearts this morning, all of us. Am I truly saved? Or do I just think I'm saved? Do I just hope I'm saved? Do I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm saved, that I would go to heaven when I die? Lord, help us answer that question this morning, all of us. Father, we pray for salvation for all of us, all of our families, all the people of Brantley County, Georgia, all the people of South Georgia. Father, we pray for salvation for all the people in the whole world. Lord, we pray this morning that your will be done. Father, help us as we wait for you to know how to live, to know what to do so that we won't get caught up in things that distract us from what's really important in this life. Lord, this morning, speak to us, Father, from your word directly. Lord, move me out of the way. I'm not important. I don't matter. You matter, Lord. Speak to all of us, your people, myself and the congregation, Lord. We pray that your will would be done, just your will in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let me tell you, you have to understand this passage of Scripture. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 was written to the early Christians in a time where they did not have the blessings that we have. They didn't have this Bible like we have it. They did not have the New Testament put down together like we have. I mean, you can read this easily and know what's going on today. We have the whole story. They didn't. Jesus has been back up into heaven maybe 30 years, 25, 30, 40 years. So these early Christians, you know what all they had? The only thing they had to go on was when Paul and Peter and all these disciples of Jesus, all these apostles would come to visit their church and form a church together. They would hear the preaching from them. That's all they had. They had that and they had the Old Testament and they had one another. That's the only thing they had. So they were struggling can you imagine what it would have been like not to have the New Testament written down? You know, and, and, and being a Christian and trying to figure out, okay, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to live? And what does God want me to do? So, so God laid it on the heart of Simon Peter to write this letter to these churches, and he, he wanted to tell them, hey, listen, while you're waiting for Jesus to come back, here's some great things to occupy your time with. Here's what you should be doing, okay? Number one, again, I'm going to give you four. Four great Christian habits we all need to cultivate. Christian disciplines. Number one is so good. I mean, it's right out of the scripture. Uh, I'm going to have Brother Frank put verse 7, the beginning verse, up on the screen. Look at verse 7. Just that first few words. But the end of all things is at hand. Let me just stop right there. Do you know what that means? Here's Christian principle number one, to live a holy life and to live a happy life. Number one, live this life to the fullest, but don't get too attached to this world. Live this life to the fullest. I mean, make the most of every day of your life. Enjoy life. Y'all, i got to tell you something. We give Jesus a bad name by the way we act sometimes. Most Christians, if, you, if we were to admit it, we go around like this. Good morning, how you doing? Oh, just another day with Jesus. 
I'm celebrating. I have joy of the Lord in my heart. How about you? Don't talk to me. You know, that kind of stuff. I know all of us missed an hour this morning. I told Marcia this morning, I want my hour back of sleeping, you know. But we, brothers and sisters, we act like we're the most depressed people in the world. We should be the most joyous people in the world because we have the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Savior. It's going to, when, let me tell you, when they put, put you in the nursing home, next stop, heaven, right? Or the hospital or something. I mean, if I don't make it through surgery, y'all have a party in my name, okay? Jerry has gone home. We are supposed to live this life to the fullest. Enjoy your life. Make the most out of it. But don't get too attached to things down here. This is not your final destination. Remember that. Keep an eternal perspective as we live our lives here in South Georgia. Brantley County. I love Brantley County. I got to tell you, this week I got a deed in the mail. I own a piece of Brantley County for the first time in my entire life. Hey, right? Marcia and I... My, my family gave us a little bit of land. We're hoping one day to build a house, to retire over here one day in Brantley County. And so we got that deed in the mail. That was the great news, right? But you know what the bad news was? I read down the letter a little more, and it said, you know, this has been given with love and whatever from your family, blah, 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 from the lawyer. And then the last little paragraph, and by the way, the tax collector of Brantley County knows who you are now. It's like, no! That kind of took some of the fun out of it. In other words, we're supposed to enjoy life but don't get too attacks. I have some land, but now I've got to pay for it. If I use it or not, I've got to pay taxes on it. John Bacon, he was a famous sculptor in England. He sculpted, carved the inscription on his own tomb. If you go to Westminster Abbey in London, you can see his tomb in there. Here's, his, here's what he put on his own casket that's there. He said, what I was as a sculptor seemed of some importance to me while I lived. But what I was as a believer in Jesus Christ is the only thing that's really important to me now. In other words, that's on his grave. Whatever I did in this life was important to me then, but now that I'm dead, the only thing that's really important to me is what I did with Jesus Christ. Let me ask you, what are you doing with Jesus? That's the only thing that's going to matter when you take that last breath, when I take that last breath, what we did to Jesus. Let me give you an example how this world is not going to last forever. Get in your car this afternoon, drive over to Jekyll Island. Some of you are going to do that. You guys are going to see the Navy band, right? Drive by all those mansions on Jekyll Island. A hundred years ago, that was it. All the millionaires of the world was where they wanted to gather together. All, they, Jekyll Island was it. It was the place to go. Now what is it a hundred years later? Ruins and museums and everything. All the millionaires and their families have moved on. That's the same way it's going to be with this earth. We are moving on. This world is passing away. Keep an eternal perspective as you live your life. Why do we spend so much time in church talking about trying to get people saved? Why? Brothers and sisters, you can live on this earth without being saved. You know that? You could live pretty good without being a Christian right now. But oh, when Jesus comes back, it's not going to be so pretty if you're not a Christian. Number one thing as a Christian, for the rest of your life, starting right now, live your life to the fullest. Don't get too attached to this world. Remember, this is not our last stop. Take this world with a grain of salt. Spend time working on what's going to happen in the next world. i got to send some more building materials up there. My house is not ready yet. How about y'all? I need to be doing some kingdom of God stuff. I don't want to get up there and have an outhouse in heaven. It'll still be heaven, but I want to have a big house, right? To live in a nice house. All right, number two. That was number one. Number two. Brother Frank's going to put verse seven up there again, if you will, on the screen. He says, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Number two. Take the privilege of prayer seriously. Prayer is a gift from God. Let me tell you. I regret in my life one thing. I have not prayed as much as I should have. I have not spent as much time with God as I should have. We think, brothers and sisters, that prayer is the last thing we need to do. Prayer is the first thing we need to be doing every single day. You know, and I, I used to think, uh, and y'all going to laugh at me because I know I can pray some long prayers. Some of the youth boys have told me, Brother Jerry, if we had one thing we want to change about you, it would be shorter prayers. You know, you get up in church and you pray so long. You realize praying is not is a conversation. It's not this 
big, long amount of words we have to repeat. Let me give you the best prayer ever prayed, one of them. This was the FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, meeting. Bobby Richardson, who used to be second baseman for the New York Yankees, they had an FCA meeting. This is his prayer. This is a classic prayer that gets to the point quick. Listen to this prayer. Dear God, your will, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. Amen. Don't you love that prayer? That says it all. Lord, we want your will, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. Amen. He's done. That said it all right there. Lord, your will be done. What kind of prayers should I be praying as a child of God, as a Christian? What kind of prayers get answered? Do you know what kind of prayers get answered? Prayers from Christians who are serious about obedience, serious about holiness. Are you serious about living a holy life for Jesus Christ? Not just living a good moral life like the world says, you know, don't steal, don't you know, go rob your neighbors or anything, but say, Lord, I want to be holy before you. Christians who are serious about that, prayers start getting answered. Prayers that surrender our wills to God's will, those get answered. Lord, your will be done, not mine. He answers those. Hey, ooh, here's one. This one hits me. Prayers that, that focus on other people and not me, 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 me all the time. Those kind of prayers get answered. Prayers where Jesus gets the glory and not me. Those get answered. Prayer is a conversation. Let me tell you, I want to challenge everybody. You want to be hear some unbelievable prayers? Come in here on Wednesday night. Between 6.15 and about, what time, Brother Justin? 6.15 and 6.35, something like that. The kids in this church pray out loud. That will bless you more than anything you've ever heard. Man, when those children start praying, I can just feel the door to heaven open wide open. You want to hear some praying? What we all adults need to be praying like? Come listen to those kids pray. They pray the most honest prayers, and it will melt your heart down in deep. Also, if you want to pray, come Sunday night, and we pray from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. We actually do that in this church. Can you believe it? A church that prays, and we're having a great time doing it. We just pass the mic around. We pray. If you want to pray, you can. If you don't, you pass the mic on. And man, let me tell you, to hear the people in this church praying for each other, that blesses me. I would rather have that than have this on Sunday morning, to be honest with you. I love coming to Sunday night. Okay, love life, number one. Don't take it too seriously, the things of this world. Number two, take the privilege of prayer seriously. Number three, I love this one. Verse eight is going to be on the screen. He says in verse eight, and above all things have fervent love for one another for love will cover a multitude of sins number three if you want to be happy if you want to be doing what God says we should do love others as deeply as you possibly can love God and love others as deeply as you possibly can that word fervent means without ceasing above all things have unceasing love for one another Lord, I want to be pleasing to you. I'm going to love my Christian brothers and sisters. I'm going to love my family. I'm going to love my coworkers. I'm going to love my enemies until I take the last breath in my body. God, I want to be known as a Christian who loves. Not a Christian who's mad, unhappy, dissatisfied. Lord, we want to be known as a church who loves. We are going to be known as people who might disagree, but we're still going to love each other. Fervent love is the kind of love that restores marriages, heals rifts in disagreements, brings couples back together, brings churches back together. No matter what other people do to me, I'm still going to love them, Lord, as a gift to you. Oliver Cromwell, his title was Lord Protector of England in the 17th century. He sentenced a soldier to be shot for his crimes. They were going to shoot this guy at the ringing of the evening bell down there in London. All of a sudden, it came time to ring the bell, and a couple guys went and yanked on the rope, and the bell didn't ring. And they yanked harder, and the bell didn't ring. They were yanking that bell, and no ringing. So they finally climbed up and found out what it was. The soldier that was going to be killed, his fiance, she had climbed up into the bell tower, and she got a hold of that ringer, and she put her hands and her body and instead of the ringer being able to hit the side of that bell, it would hit her with his, all that force. When they brought her down, she was bleeding. Her hands were all torn up and everything. And they brought her to Oliver Cromwell, and they said to her, he goes, 
what are you doing? She goes, that is my soon-to-be husband up there you're going to kill. I, didn't, I would rather give my life, I love him that much, than have that bell to ring. Oliver Cromwell said, his heart was touched, he said, that man is going to live because of your sacrifice. The curfew bell will not ring tonight. She gave him his life back. That girl's love touched that man's heart. Brothers and sisters, do you realize loving each other is what will enable us to get over it when other people let us down? And are they going to let you down? Are people going to let you down? Absolutely. They're gonna, we're going to let each other down. The church, I got news for you. I hate to tell you this. Newsflash, the church is going to let you down. Don't get mad and go home and say, well, those people down there aren't perfect. I'm shocked. You mean they're sinners in the church? I got news for you. The preacher's going to let you down. The deacons are going to let you down. Your own family's going to let you down. Hey, I've been let myself down sometimes. Y'all ever do that? We need to love beyond that. Rather than wear our feelings on our shoulders, say, Lord, I'm going to be a person that loves, even when I don't like what's going on. Love is what motivated Jesus to take that cross off. Love. Loving us, does, loving each other does not require knowing the Bible more. You don't have to have a seminary degree to love people. You don't have to know Greek or Hebrew. You don't have to be married to a college professor. Nope. Don't have to know music. You don't have to be able to quote scripture. All you got to do is open your heart up and just love people. Be a person. God wants us to be people who are known by our love. All right, we've been through three so far. Number one, love life. Don't get too attached to this world. Number two, take the privilege of prayer seriously. Number three, love other people as deeply as we can. Number four is my favorite. Find out what our gift is and use it for God's glory. Discover our gifts and use them for God's glory. Verse 10, and uh, verse 10, I believe in verse 11, Brother Frank's going to put it on the screen. As each one has received a gift. Let me stop right there. As each one has received a gift. Raise your hand if God has given you no gift. I want to meet you. You know what that means? Everybody in this room, God has given you some kind of gift to use for his glory. All, it may be a different gift. Your gift may be, uh, it may not be singing in the choir. It may not be this, it may not be that. But you've got some kind of gift. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know, I've been amazed. I've been watching and I've been thinking about this for a while. If you watch what's going on in America right now, I, and forget political parties, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, what do you hear people screaming for all over America? I want equal what? Give me my equal rights. I want to be treated equally. I want to be treated fairly. I want to be treated with respect, right? I mean, everybody's clamoring, give me my equal rights. I want the right to be treated equally. Do you realize that's what Jesus Christ gave us? In his church, brothers and sisters, when we serve the Lord, everybody's gift is as valuable as every other gift. Jesus Christ already has given everybody equal rights who follow him. We don't have to demand our rights. All we've got to do is surrender our lives to Jesus. He values everything. Every person's abilities in this room, every person's contributions are equally important and equally valued by the Lord. Let me give you a perfect example. I'm going to bust the preacher this morning. You're going to get to see it. Last Sunday, what do you think God was more pleased with? My 25-minute sermon or when that little Julia came here and we all sang Amazing Grace. Right? That little girl's gift was open the doors of this church right to heaven. And we worshiped when that girl was singing. I could preach the rest of the day. Her gift was being used. Whatever gift you have, I want to urge you and beg you. Do you know what's happening in this church and every other church? We have more needs than we have people willing to do anything. Much more needs. We have a few people who are working themselves to death, and then we have a lot of people who are doing very little in God's kingdom, but taking it in. I want to challenge you this year, just give a little bit. If You realize if everybody, every member of Southside Baptist gave a little bit, we'd have so much more going on in this church. 
We can't find people to work with the children. We can't find people to work with the youth. We can't find people who are willing to sing. We can't find people who want to come and pray. What does that say? It says something bad about us, not about God. It says we need to change our schedules till we have more time to serve God in our lives. We're working ourselves to death for the state and for this world and doing all this kind of stuff, and the church of Jesus Christ is just limping along. That's our fault. That's not his fault. I want to challenge you this morning. I'm not trying to beat up anybody, but I want to tell you, it breaks my heart to see Christians not using their gifts for the Lord because I didn't use mine for years, and I was wrong. I'm standing here in a perfect example. I'm not judging you because I was the laziest Christian in the world for 25 years, and I'm ashamed of that now. I want to urge you, use your gift for the Lord. Find out what your gift is. This church needs you. Abraham Lincoln became president, and in his day, people used to come straight to the president to get a job in the government. You didn't apply online or any of that kind of stuff. You came to see President Lincoln. And all day long, people were driving him crazy. He couldn't get anything done because people wanted jobs. Everybody was coming. Finally, Abraham Lincoln got wore down. He got sick. They put him in bed, found out he had typhoid fever. If you know anything about typhoid fever, it is highly contagious. He had had it with people pecking at him, trying to get a job all the time. Finally, he told his secretary, okay, get those job seekers and bring them now here into the bedroom. I now have something I can give to everybody. <laughs> Typhoid fever. You know what? If Jesus were to appear this morning, I think he would say two, two things to us in the church. Number one, repent of those secret sins that you've got going on in your life. He would say to us, it's time to repent. Stop doing what you're doing and call yourself a Christian. Clean your life up. And number two, he would say, start using those gifts I gave you while there's still time. You don't think you have anything you can contribute to God? Consider the postage stamp. You know what a postage stamp's usefulness is? A postage stamp is only useful its ability to stick to one thing, and one thing only, no matter how long it takes to get there. Think about it. That stamp goes wherever that letter goes, and that's its job. Brothers and sisters, we can all do that one thing. Four things this morning. Love life, but don't get too attached to it. Take the privilege of prayer seriously. Love other people as deeply as we can and finally discover our gifts and use them for God's glory now while we have time. What are you going to do this morning with the Lord? God spoke to the early church. Some of them listened. Some of them didn't. They're dead now. Now it's our time. We're alive right now. This is it. This is crunch time. The game is on. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? I have to ask myself the same thing. The altar is going to be open if you want to come. I invite every Christian to come and pray. Say, Lord, let me be a better child of God this year. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you for the privileges we have given. Father, help us to take full advantage of our Christian life. Do the things that please you now while we have time before it's too late. Lord, we pray for people to be saved. We pray for people to commit, to begin to work, to serve, wherever you call us to be. Lord, but most of all, we all pray, help us surrender our lives completely. Whatever you want us to do, we'll be willing to do. Father, that's the beginning of a Christian life. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. Lord, I thank you for your word. It gets, it gets us back to where we're supposed to be, Lord, because we all can get off track. Bless this church. Bless all the churches of Brantley County. Lord, I want to pray. There's a number of our brothers and sister churches in Brantley County who are looking for pastors right now. Please, Lord, I pray for these Christian brothers and sisters. Send them the pastors that you want them to have. Send them the servant leaders who love them and want to serve them. Father, I pray. I can think of three or four churches right now that need pastors in Brantley County. Please, Lord, we ask you as, as the family of God, we love them, we thank you for them, we pray you bless their churches and fill them up. Father, we pray for the salvation of every person in Brantley County. Lord, help us to, to see the need that only maybe 10 or 15% of our county is even in church, even safe. We love you, Jesus, this morning. We pray your blessings on the rest of this service. Have your will and your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing a hymn of invitation. What can Jesus do for you this morning? Are you saved? Do you need to come and be saved? Do you need to commit to a church family? Do you need to be baptized? Whatever it is, we can help you with it. Let's sing as we sing.
so much. Thank you, everybody, for coming this morning. Guests, we want to tell you we were thrilled to have you with us. I see a lot of folks visiting with us this morning, and we are so honored to have you. Hope you'll come back. Uh, Brother David, uh, I know we have some announcements to make. Um, yes. One of the announcements, uh, the seniors in the bulletin, we're going to have a fellowship, the senior citizens, and because of some health issues, they're going to postpone that, so just ignore that. We'll take that out of the bulletin this week. And also we have a, me a media committee meeting at 4 o'clock today. Is that correct? 4 o'clock. Well, we won't even give the Sunday school report. Uh, it was so bad. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we expect it to be better next week when we don't have to worry about time changes and all. I do want to say that the uh, members of the band will be traveling over to Jekyll this afternoon, but be back in time for church tonight. Uh, the Navy band is playing there, and we're going to uh, sit back and enjoy and learn from that experience. Children's Choir uh, will be... Um, going on tonight because we're going to sing next Sunday and I uh, hope uh, all our kids will uh, be there. <laughs> any, any other announcements? Yes, yes, yes Michelle. Sean may be coming home this week. Yeah. Coming home this week. Love it. That is a miracle. Going to be a walking miracle, <laughs> that man. Anything else? Six o'clock, generation change for youth. Anything else? I'm going to ask Brother Heimrich Maneuver if he would close us in prayer. <laughs> Love you, brother. Thank you for letting us tease you a little bit.